guys, I am here with Dr. JJ Levenstein, baker extraordinaire, and JJ is going to show us how to make a perfect loaf of sourdough bread. Okay, so I am here with Dr. JJ Levenstein, who is a pediatrician, but more importantly, she is a trained chef, a baker extraordinaire. We are here in the Boulevard Kitchen in Sherman Oaks, Los Angeles. I work with JJ on the TV show that I'm on, and when I discovered that not only is she the most incredible cook, but a baker of sourdough bread, I was like, okay, you're mine. We're going to come to this community, and so JJ and I have actually done a series of videos. If you haven't seen the other ones, I highly recommend you take a look. We did one on how to make your own sourdough starter, and that's very important prelude to this video of how to make your own bread. So JJ, take it away. All right, so I'm going to take it away with, I call her my red Ferrari. This is my stand mixer with a dough hook, which actually saves me a lot of wear and tear because it simulates the action of the human hand in kneading the stove. Now, if you don't have a stand mixer, you'll be sweating for 20 minutes, but you know, just like a grandmother's yeah, uh, yeah, cookery, yeah. it's that sweat that gives it the unique flavor that just really pays off because we do need salt and bread. So a little sweat is not <laughs> gonna hurt anybody. No. So anyway, what, uh, what, what we do is that when we bake ours in bread, we, if we have a ratio in our head of ingredients, then you can always remember it. You never have to go to a cookbook and you can always, always play with this. So the ratio is one part of flour to one part of starter, because I actually really like a sour loaf, so do I, yeah. to a half a part of water or what's called a soaker. And I'll yes. explain that in a second. So in this bowl... Oh, one yeah. second. Oh. And I just want to let you know that we will put all of this underneath the video. That's so right. JJ, don't worry, they'll have all the instructions. Okay, so what you need is a mixer and you need a food scale, and we deal in grams, uh, grams that makes you happy as a European. Um, Despite Brexit, yes. now what are you? Yeah, yeah, uh, you're yeah. something else something now. Else. Whatever exactly. you are. Okay, yes. but <laughs> anyway, true. so we use 500 grams of flour, and in this bowl, I've used 400 grams of whole wheat and 100 grams of rye. I wish I could use a little bit more rye, but rye, because it's low in gluten, structurally just can't hold up, and it actually has enzymes in it that cause it to implode on itself. So when you cook with rye, you have to have sourdough starter, because sourdough starter actually inhibits those enzymes in rye and allows you to rise a loaf very nicely. So I use about 20% rye, so that's 100 grams of rye, 400 grams of whole wheat. It totals 500 grams. Then I put 500 grams of our starter. That's one to one. And now comes the, the interesting part. If I didn't want to put seeds or nuts or anything in here, then I would put about 250 grams of water, which is roughly a cup of water. Be any kind of water. Tap water, bottled water, it really doesn't matter. But I want to make this bread a little bit more interesting. And I know Sophie talked about four ingredients. Well, now we have 11 because in this bowl is something called a soaker. It has all the seeds I found in my refrigerator yesterday. So we've got chia, we've got pepita, we've got sunflower, we've got sesame, we've got poppy, I've got some uh, rolled oats that I found. Wow! And what you do is take about two cups of seeds, one to two cups of seeds, depending on your preference, cover it with water, let it yeah. soak overnight in your refrigerator, and then the soaker, because it's so moist, kind of acts as your water. So you put your soaker wow. in, and then um, we're gonna look at this dough. I'm gonna put the rest of this soaker in here. I love it because those seeds just add all so those healthy omegas right. as well. Exactly. Omega free fatty acids. Exactly. And so when you put when you put your soaker in, do it towards the end of your loaf. And what you want is for your dough, when you know it's ready, you're gonna beat it for 20 minutes on low. You know it's ready when it comes away from the edge of the bowl and the bowl itself looks clean. Okay. If it gets really sticky and smushy and stays on the bottom, add just a little bit more of your flour, okay. Okay, your predominant flour, and watch it come off the edge. And then let it cook, not cook, let it beat for about 20 minutes or so, just on low like this, okay? Okay. So when it is done, it is going to look like this. Okay, now, we have structure in here from gluten, and that's on a microscopic level. But what we want to do is start to build structure by, first of all, letting this relax and lay on a beach towel, okay? So, basically, we're going to take our dough out, our, our beaten dough out, 
And now and it's on the beach. Is it on the beach towel now? Okay, yes. and I want you to spray this bowl, Sophie, with this is Vegeline, and this is a vegetable spray that has absolutely no flavor whatsoever. Um, and it actually will not uh, mess with the flavor of your bread uh, or give you any overtones or undertones. Okay, so you want to flatten out that wad of bread and you fold it like an envelope. Okay, so one third of the letter here, one third of the letter here. It's a little wet from that soaker. Yeah. Okay. And then you want to, and this takes brute strength, just fold it again onto itself. And it's kind of a big blob like this. Okay. So we'll put it in a sprayed bowl and we'll just cover it for an hour. Why do we cover it for an hour? Not really to wait for it to raise, but actually to relax the gluten. Because when we go to shape our loaf, we want it to be really loosey goosey like a belly dancer, okay? And right now that gluten is just stiff and straight as a soldier. So we want this, uh, we want this um, flour also to hydrate, so the water and the, and the uh, soaker that we added will hydrate our flour by waiting an hour as well. And um, also some of the enzymatic activity of the sourdough starter will get started and it will start releasing some of those long carbohydrates and turn them into shorter chains of sugars, which will give us beautiful flavor for our loaf. So after- oh, I love all this science. Yeah, okay. So after an hour, if we're gonna compare side by side, this is exactly the same weight of a loaf. So this is my loaf after an hour. It's risen a little bit as we see because it's quite warm in here. Um, and what we'll see is a change in the texture of this bread. So if I want you to just press on that a little bit. Wow. And see how soft it is? Press on that. Oh Let's my see how hard gosh. it is. That, that's like concrete. Right. It's really hard and this is all sort of as JJ said, loosey goosey. Like, loosey goosey. Okay, so then Beautiful. what we're going to do is we're going to again create a little architecture in this loaf. Um, it's already happening on a microscopic level. We're going to help it on a macroscopic or gross level. So we're going to fold it like a letter again in three here. And take note that the bread is cracking, the dough is cracking a little bit, and that's because we have all these seeds in here. Now, if you just had a whole wheat loaf with rye with no seeds, you'd have a very smooth surface, but this is a very rustic loaf. So imperfections uh, clearly show oh, that it's handmade, yeah, love it. and it doesn't affect the flavor of the bread at all. In fact, if we if we open a little bit more surface area on the crust of the bread, guess what? We got a crustier bread. Yeah. So we're gonna fold it like a letter. We're gonna turn it one quarter turn. We're going to fold it like a letter again. And then we're going to turn it up this way. We see it's a little smoother, easier to manage. Then you're going to take your hands like a karate chop, like at a 45 degree angle to the table. And you're going to start pushing in and turning like this. Push, push in, so that you're creating this nice taut surface on the top. All right, so you've got this beautiful round loaf, and you can use your hands. It's kind of like Play-Doh. It's wonderful. You could also put this in uh, into a torpedo shape, whatever, yeah. whatever you would like. But we're going to be baking this in a cast iron pot that's round. So whatever shape your vessel is, you're going to um, let it rise in that shape. Okay. Okay. So our next step then is now it's going to rise and it's going to take three hours and again there's continued hydration in the flour now the magic and the chemistry happens we've got the architecture set and by the time it rises after three hours we're going to be ready to bake so to rise it we're going to put a clean dishcloth into our bowl and use the same bowl all along you know we're, we're going to save water here and we're going to be uh be nice to the planet yeah um you can use brown rice flour, and sometimes if you don't have brown rice flour, use white rice flour. So why all of a sudden am I talking about rice flour? Well, rice flour is that thing that when you buy a loaf at an artisan bakery and it's got that beautiful white sheen on it, that is crispy, crunchy, tasty goodness in the form of flour. So in honor of Sophie, we have organic Thank brown you, rice okay. flour. I use white, but there's really no difference at all. So what you want to do is you want to sprinkle a little bit in your cloth. Put your loaf in, my baby. <laughs> Sprinkle baby. some on the top. And just smooth it over. So you've got a beautiful coating. Right? Then you can just cover your loaf and forget about it for about three hours, okay? So, after we've forgotten about it for about three hours, here's what this baby looks like. It is fully risen. Oh my god! It is fully risen and 
One of the marks of uh, a, an artisan loaf is to score it, and some bakeries score it according to what kind of bread they're making. So some may put an X there if they just have a plain sourdough, they may do a tic-tac-toe if they've got a rye loaf, and maybe their whole wheat is a, a, the mark of Zorro. So what you can do is develop your own signature, and there, there's a point to doing this. It actually helps release some of the moisture out of the loaf so that when we cook it in our cast iron, it creates this wonderful environment environment that's moist and we cook this bread in heated cast iron. Cast iron, I use a large um, a pan and a lid and we heat both the pan and the lid at 475 for at least a half an hour. Then we pop this into the hot cast iron covered for 25 minutes at 475, uncovered for 25 minutes at 475 and during that covering phase all that water coming out of this loaf is going back into the crust and creating that amazing artisan chewy crust that steam injection ovens do in professional bakeries. But you're doing it at home in your granny's cast iron. And if you don't have cast iron, a Le Creuset is great, or if you've got a big stainless steel stock pot, that's fine. Or go to your local uh, flea market yeah, exactly. and buy some granny's wonderful old stew pot and call it a day. Just make sure there's not a plastic lid on the top that will melt. implode and melt, exactly. So we pop that in, we don't need to spray it, we don't need to do anything fancy. 25 minutes lid on, 25 minutes lid off. When the loaf comes out, it does something that Sophie does very well. It sings. <laughs> I'm and I'm say, and I'm saying this entirely <laughs> tongue in cheek. It chirps and That's sings amazing. for about an hour because the moisture is still coming out of the loaf. There's still some what's called carryover cooking going on, and so you're so tempted to open it up right away, but it structurally still is doing its thing. So if you can wait at least for half an hour or so till it stops cracking and singing to open up the loaf, then you're good to go. Um, and if they're if you're like my husband and I, where we're trying our best not to eat too much. What I do is I cut the loaf in four, I wrap each piece in uh, saran wrap and then in freezer foil, and we put them in the freezer and then that way we're not wasting our loaf. But again, the worst thing that can happen, croutons if it goes stale, or you can make croutons and then throw them in your food processor and make the most delicious bread crumbs. Oh. Exactly, so that we literally are never wasting a thing out of these loaves. There's always a place for leftover bread, whether it's fresh out of the oven and in her belly, or if it's stale and we're just doing something else and repurposing it. So that's sourdough 101 and that's it. in a nutshell. That's the finished look, yeah, JJ. Yeah, look so at that's that. The look. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh. You know, JJ, I cannot thank you enough. I am going to watch this video over and <laughs> over. I'm going to watch it about three times because I was just drinking in what you were saying and you make it simple. But I think what's so beautiful about the process of making a loaf that I've realized as you were going through this process is that in a way, it's like a sort of meditation. It is. It you is. put aside a day when you're just hanging a, a around right. and you can be doing lots of other things but you're just waiting it for it to rise or kneading it or doing this or doing that it's just a beautiful sort of process of days of old that connects us to our food no and, it, and it's true and I think seasonally there's uh, there's other things that you could do with this loaf obviously we just showed you one way to make it healthy but I know around Thanksgiving time I love making the same whole wheat and rye combination but I soak some uh, dried cranberries in a little bit of brandy okay <laughs> and I get some fresh rosemary and I poach some garlic and I cut those all up and put that in this bread. You can put in nuts, you can put in seeds, dried fruit, you can put herbs in. Put plenty more in than you think you need because in the process of baking you, you, know, you may yes. lose some of the flavor, but it really, just experiment with it. This again, it's a blank canvas, it's a healthy canvas to begin with. Play with it, dabble with it, share it with your friends and just enjoy this beautiful homemade loaf, and honestly, we probably made it for about $2. Oh my. At the very most. At, at the, the very, very most. most. At the very most. JJ, you are absolutely amazing. Please leave any questions that you have for JJ underneath this video, because I know some of you will have some questions. So feel free. Would you kindly go in and answer the questions that sure. we're going to leave? Happy to do it. And so do please do that. And, um, and any comments and any suggestions, because JJ has a lot of other really, really, She's just an incredible cook. So, other suggestions for JJ? Let us know and let's tuck into this loaf yeah, and we'll see you next time. It. Let's do it, Sophie. Wow. Look at that.
beautiful crumb. Oh, look at it. I see all those chia seeds and delicious seeds. I'm just going to I'm just going to go. Oh, and and JJ, who's so sweet, knows that I don't eat butter because I'm plant-based, has done a little olive oil with... And this is dukkah, which is oh. basically a Middle Eastern uh, coriander, cumin, a little bit of sea salt, and some hazelnuts. And it's just the best, best combination when you have a healthy loaf like this. Thank you, JJ. You're Insane. Welcome. You're welcome. My pleasure. Bon appetit!